there were times this season where we looked like promotion contenders. They were good times. Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View for another review of another Oxford United game. Today, Oxford were at home to Leighton Orient. After a disappointing 2-2 draw against Northampton, you can see my review of that in the top corner, Oxford are on one of the most underwhelming unbeaten runs that they've had since last season when they went on an underwhelming unbeaten run under... Carl Robinson. Too many draws and we've really not made any progress in terms of points despite still being in a pretty good position in the playoffs. But Oxford really needed to get a win today. They needed to get back to winning ways. <sighs> but they didn't. They came up against a late and Orient side who, for my money, outplayed them for large periods and, for my money, deserved to get the victory today. They came from behind and got that victory as well. It finished. Oxford United won. Leighton Orient 2. And full credit to Richie Well inside and full credit to you Leighton Orient fans. You've got happy memories of the Kassam Stadium and you've got another one in your memory banks there. And if there were outside chance of you getting promotion this season, you've certainly strengthened that claim with a big win today. And we'll unpack the misery of this Oxford United performance. We'll go over the team news, I'll do my review of the game and I'll give my final thoughts for both sides. You can jump to any point of the video by using the timestamps uh, down below or on the video itself. And please feel free to do that. But if you do, and I really need it, I need those likes, please hit that like button. It does actually help me out quite a lot to get this video out to more people. And if you do like the content, consider subscribing. Let's have a look at this Oxford United lineup. It's the same formation from that 2-2 draw against Northampton, but Des Buckingham has changed the personnel a little bit. Joe Bennett and Billy Bowden drop to the bench. Jay Matete and Tyler Goodrum come into the side. Greg Lee goes back to left back. Brannigan playing in a more higher up the pitch role alongside Ruben Rodriguez. Mark Harris is still preferred to Will Goodwin up front, despite Will Goodwin getting his first goal on Tuesday night and there still is no Tyler Bure on the pit on the bench sorry certainly not on the pitch uh, he has not been in the matchday squad for the last three games what is going on has he got a bad attitude is he out of favor or have we just got too many bodies and he's just the one missing out either way it's a bit of a shame because I thought he showed a lot of potential Moving on to Leighton Orient and Richie Wellens. O's have been brilliant this season on their return to Skybet with League One. And they started the day in ninth place. Last time out, though, they did suffer a home defeat to Burton. And Richie Wellens has made two changes himself from that side. Tom James and top scorer Ruel Sutriel come back into the side. Sutriel and Shaq Ford have scored 19 goals this season up front between the pair of them. But there are two ex Oxford United players that are not available today. That is Jordan Graham and Dan Adji, who both, both sorry, miss out through injury. This is a massive game, and it's a massive game for both sides. Oxford really need a win, but Orient could do with a win themselves. And as I said at the start of the video, a win will put them right in the playoff mix. First 10 minutes, and Leighton Orient were the side that settled much better than Oxford United, and they were moving the ball around very smartly from the off, really. And, and it was El Mazzuni who was the catalyst of all the good things that Leighton Orient did through the game. Not for the first time today, found a little pocket space in midfield, drove to the edge of the box, tried to feed in Citriel, but he just was forced a little bit wide and it was an easy save for Jamie Cumming. It was uh, 15 minutes on the clock and the first time you saw Oxford put a decent attack together as Harris played in Goodwin down the left-hand side and Tyler got into the area but kind of overplayed it a bit, was in two minds of what he was going to do and got the ball to Rodriguez and he kind of was unsure as well and in the end, the attack just fizzled out. But five minutes later, Oxford did find themselves in front and it was a good play by Harris once again who got Rodriguez in down the other flank, down the right-hand side this time. And Rodriguez was in acres of space and did really well to actually wait for the runners to arrive, played the ball across goal, played it across to Tyler Goodrum. Tyler Goodrum's little flick at the near post, hits a late and Orient player and goes into the back of the net. Is it Tyler Goodrum's goal? Is it an OG? Does it really matter? Oxford are winning. But like on Tuesday night where Oxford had control of the game for large periods, they never had control of this one. And, and Leighton Orient themselves, when in possession, were very tidy and moved the ball around quite comfortably. And when Oxford were in possession, their press was relentless. And Oxford had a really hard time 
keeping possession of the ball away from Leighton Orient and uh, quite a few mistakes did creep in. I thought Jay Matete actually was quite poor in midfield today and a number of times he played some hospital passes that nearly led to Leighton Orient attacks. There was one which led to a weak shot in the end which was saved by Jamie Cumming. 38 minutes on the clock for the next time there was a meaningful attack and it came from Leighton Orient again who were passing the ball around neatly and a good straight ball through the middle got El Mazzuni again motoring forward to the edge of the area. He played it to Moncur. His shot was straight at Jamie Cumming who could only actually palm it back into the middle of the goal. Unfortunately, Kieran Brown was there to clear the danger. But Orient found themselves all over Oxford in these final 10, 15 minutes of the first half. Both wingers causing the fullbacks problems. Uh, Shaq Ford seemed like he had the beating of Greg Lee. He forced another good save from Jamie Cumming and Oxford got it clear. Shaq Ford again got between Lee. Brannigan had to come back to help him. It looked a little bit dodgy to me that Brannigan bought Shaq Ford down in the area. I keep saying Shaq Ford. He's one of these guys that you feel like you have to say both names. Bought Ford down in the area. It was one of those ones where you were looking at the referee and just from an Oxford point of view, closing your eyes and waiting for the whistle to go. Thankfully, it didn't. And Oxford, you felt like Oxford got away with one there. It definitely goes in the could have seen them given category. And we got through to halftime 1-0 up and slightly fortunate to be so because I don't think Oxford have been very good in this game. But the game itself, far more watchable than what we saw on Tuesday night, played at much a much quicker pace. And a lot of that comes down to Leighton Orient, who... Whereas Northampton just sat back and let us have the ball. They got in our face and really made it difficult for Oxford United. They played with purpose in possession and their press, as I said, was fantastic. But there were times where Oxford were able to nip it round the defence, round the round the press of Leighton Orient and create overloads and create counterattacks. And that is where the goal came from, is from Oxford beating the press. So I just go back to saying that Leighton Orient, for my money, one of the most impressive sides I've seen at the Kassam this season. And they've certainly, in terms of the way they played, really, really troubled Oxford. And El Mazzuni in midfield was the driving force behind everything. O'Neill and Ford looked like they had the beating of both fullbacks on the flanks. And for my money, Oxford a little fortunate to be 1 0 up at half time. But we find ourselves 1 0 up at half time again. We've seen this story many times, Oxford fans, and you felt we needed a couple more goals in this one if we were going to go and win it. And we move into the second half of this game. This was a terrible, terrible second half for Oxford United. I'll go into more of it in my final thoughts. But didn't Lloyd and Orient didn't have to wait long to get their equaliser. Just six minutes into the second half. 51 minutes on the clock. And O'Neill got the goal. From Leighton Orient's point of view, it was a very good team move. The likes of Ford, Prattley, Moncur were all involved around the edge of the box to keep it alive. El Mazzuni got the ball into the area on the left-hand side. He squared it to O'Neill and O'Neill hit an early shot into the corner, a cross coming into the back of the net. From Oxford's point of view, it's another ugly goal to concede, just like what we've seen against Northampton Town, where a bunch of players had opportunities to clear it, starting with Greg Lee, who sort of slipped as he cleared it, but the likes of Brannigan and uh, Matete and Brown, Negru, uh, Long, all had chances to clear this ball and smuggle the danger away. And they were far too passive and they just let Leighton Orient just kept coming in, so kept coming into the area and eventually we were punished. And sometimes after equalising away from home, might have just tried to settle down, but Leighton Orient sensed blood in the water and came for the win and moved them, moving the ball around smartly again around our penalty area. And it was a very bad challenge by Kieran Brown on El Mazzuni, which gave Leighton Orient a free kick right on the edge of the box in a very dangerous position. Position. Tom James took it and Jamie Cumming had to make a wonderful save to tip it over the bar. 62 minutes on the clock and finally we saw some subs for Oxford United and get Goodwin and Dale came on. They made a big difference in the game against Northampton Town. Could they do it today? But no, they couldn't. The game got frantic, the game got a bit stretched and Oxford did try to push forward and try and get um, a second goal but they just kept making mistakes and giving the ball away and stooping in bad areas and Leighton Orient were able to counter-attack and it was a bit scrappy for a time but it was Leighton Orient who got that second goal and plain and simply Oxford just cannot defend. We gave the ball away high up the pitch and Leighton Orient just played the ball down into the left-hand side for Moncur and he was able to get on it. 
I'm not sure he was up against Long or I'm not sure he was up against McGuane, but he seemed to have a pretty easy time to just glide into the penalty area, get a bit of space and curl one past Jamie Cumming to make it 2-1 to Leighton Orient. They deserved it. The O's deserved it. They did sit back a little bit then and invite a bit of pressure on and Oxford did improve we'll after going 2-1 down and you finally saw a bit of urgency from the players. Brannigan played like a bit of a mad dog like he does sometimes trying to do everything himself but you did at least see chances try to happen. There was a header from Rodriguez and a shot from Brannigan which forced Bryn into two good saves and whilst there was pressure there was no real other chances for Oxford United and Leighton Orient come away with a big win from the Kassam Stadium not for the first time and for Oxford United it's a miserable game, a miserable result and that leaves our season in tatters. And that brings me on to my final thoughts, and I will start with the visitors, Leighton Orient, and I've said it all the way through the visitor through the video, but I was thoroughly impressed with the way you played today. I, I to a man, you ba out battled, out scrapped, out played Oxford United. I thought for large periods of this game, I thought you moved the ball around really tidily from the back to front. And El Mazzuni, you had a, a, a guy who was willing to drop off and get the ball in pockets of space and drive forward. Lively forwards up front. Wingers who were able to create problems. And you caused Oxford United problems all the way through the game. And I can see why you've had so many big wins and why you've been on a good run in this second half of the season and why you've gone to places like Portsmouth and caused an upset by beating them there. Because for me, you are one of the best sides we have played. And I would say if this carries on towards the end of the season... I would not rule against you getting into the playoffs, and I mean that strongly, because of the likes of ourselves, Blackpool and Stevenage are very inconsistent, although Stevenage and Blackpool did get some good wins today. I think you should be really proud and really encouraged with the side that Richie Wellens has built and the way you're playing this season, and I thought El Mizuni was magnificent in midfield today. And... Good luck for the rest of the season. Uh, you feel free to put disparaging and derogatory comments down below and you can talk about that win you had years ago where you sent us down to the conference. But I don't have any problem with Leighton Orient. Uh, as any side that's come to the hell and back of the conference, I, I have respect for. And um, good win for you guys today and good luck for the rest of the season. And I would not be shocked at all if you finished above us. And that brings me on to Oxford United. And I have to say, for me, this is a day where... <laughs> For me, the music died. The the the, the day where I, I've lost confidence in this Oxford United side. I've lost confidence in the, the managerial approach and the style of play to the point where I can't see us getting a promotion spot and I can't see us getting promoted this season. And it's a real shame. And I've been clutching at straws a little bit in recent weeks to try and keep it going and picking the positives out of it and thinking how we are tiptoeing forward but today was a huge step back today we were I felt we were out definitely out fought and for large parts outplayed by a Leighton Orient side who just looked like, like they had more purpose more will and more desire to play on the front foot and play football in dangerous areas and and, and cause problems and yeah they're a good side and you're not always going to have things your own way but th this just Hammers home today how we don't look like a top side in this league. We don't look like one of the best sides in this league. And the the style of play has absolutely regressed since Des Buckingham has taken over. And I don't want Des Buckingham out. I still think he can do a good job. I still think he will improve as a manager. And I still think you need to give him time. But I totally understand if people do want him out. And I totally understand that all the questions being asked of him and all because uh, uh, he's running out of excuses you know the players that we wanted back are back now they've played games now but they don't seem to be playing well now and we don't seem to be putting size under sustained pressure Northampton we were unlucky in that game but we didn't do enough to drive home winning position today we got in another winning position but the players just seemed a little bit 
I thought they looked scared and they looked tentative and they looked like they didn't want to try and play. They were they were nervy in possession of, of that late and Orient press. And from that point of view, if you're going to be like that, you might as well just stick Will Goodwin up front to smash balls up to him and try and have him win second balls. Because in the end, that's what we did anyway. And Harris isn't going to win most of those balls. And I even thought Mark Harris did all right today and played a part in the goal. So many players just were off, didn't impact the game, didn't weren't up for the fight like the likes of Rodriguez I don't think Goodrum was very I don't know if he scored but he wasn't very good overall I don't think Murphy was very good overall and and you can't just put that down to having a game and they didn't have a game uh, we just we, we we were just second best for large periods and for me that unbeaten run has been so underwhelming and you got to a position where it was a tipping point we we're either going to win games and kick on and have a really good run or it was going to come unstuck and we would see it for what it really was. And that was a average at best string of results. Uh, too many draws, even if we'd have won three of those games or two of those games where we drew them, we would be in a stronger position than we are now. And this, this loss wouldn't have felt so bad. But the fact that there were wins for Blackpool and there were wins for Steve Rodriguez and there were wins for Peterborough, there were wins for Barnsley just makes it seem that we've not made any progress in the last few weeks and it, it makes us puts us right behind the eight ball now certainly with having played games more and I know there's still a lot of way long way to go and a lot of games to go but I've just lost a lot of confidence in this Oxford United side based on that result and that performance today and defensively what the hell are they doing what the hell are they doing it's so weak at the back those goals we conceded the second one against Northampton and, and those two today how many players had a chance to clear the ball how many players just were scared as soon as Nor uh, Leighton Orient got around our penalty area or in our penalty area how many players just didn't decide to put their foot through it and get it 20 yards out up the pitch or even whack it into the stands poor decision making and piss poor play at the back line and you can't just say oh we didn't have Elliot Moore those other players have got to stand up and take responsibility those those players like Greg Lee, Kieran Brown, Brannigan, Matete, Long, they've all played a lot of football. They don't need Elliot Moore there to know how to defend or they shouldn't do. And it was laughably bad. And especially the second one. Well, the first one was bad. I can't even say especially. The second one was bad as well when you just let... let um, Moncur just glide into the penalty area, just, just easily waltz onto the foot he wants to strike it with and curl it home with no pressure and no willingness to stick a foot out. What is going on with this football club? It is so disappointing that we had a real shot of promotion this year, folks. I really thought it was going to be our time. But it doesn't look like it's going to be the case and it looks like we're going to have to endure a last 10 games of the season where things could get really bad and really ugly and really nasty. I hope it's not the case because we've got a heck of a trip next week to Pompey. Who thinks we're going to get anything from that game? Well, who knows? But I don't think we will. Let me know down below. Let me know your comments. I'm dreading it. I'm dreading it. And I'm actually going to say you don't all have to... If you want Buckingham out, that's fine. You can write. I can't really stop you from writing stuff, but... Think of my sanity, folks. Think of my sanity. But I am interested to know what you think. Um, I kind of already know because it's probably similar to what I do. Yeah, not good. I'm going to switch off everything now and, and go back to um, doing something else. Maybe, maybe I'm going to start doing jigsaw puzzles or um, Lego or something because um, these are a bit painful. Well done, Orient. Oh, Oxford, what are we doing? Bye for now. Try and enjoy your weekend.